Thank you so much, Vivian. Thank you so yeah. much for the invitation and having both me and Selva and the team here. And a very good afternoon to everyone who is actually uh, logged in today. It's a Friday and it's the weekend soon. And well, at least in, in, in the Klang Valley, we are going to phase three today. And I, I think there are a lot more states going into different phases already. So I think we are progressing. So that is a good news in October already. Great, great to have you. And like I said, thank you so much for coming in. And great to have everyone's inputs in terms of the opinions that you have actually put there, culture opportunities to develop and all. Compensation is there. Interestingly, I was actually expecting something like dollars and cents perhaps and more into that, but very good. Um, a lot more things are on the non-monetary stuff, which is good. A lot more progress would have been there already, I presume. So, but then again, let me try to share a little bit more into what are our propositions like Vivian said just now, what are the strategies and innovations that both me and Selva would be presenting today in terms of winning the talent war, but that's really half the talent or rather half the battle, okay? So let me start with a little bit of a backstory. You probably saw that just now, a sneak peek just now. Um, it was, hmm, come on. Okay, my slide just took a little bit longer. So uh, I remember back in last year, 2020, end of 2020, uh, a friend of mine, I met up with a friend of mine who is going to go for a appraisal with her manager. My friend is Sonia and her manager is Joe. Okay, and she had a fantastic year as a senior programmer delivering projects and to the satisfaction of the, his manager and she was actually very confident to have this appraisal because uh, she has done a fantastic job. In fact, over, you know, over and uh, how should I say, over delivered would probably be the right word. But there was another uh, intention that she has in mind. And that was actually to get her blessing of the manager for another role that she knew has became available in the next team, which is a project manager. Because in the last recent year, she has had um, interlocks with project managers, a few project managers in the multiple projects she has, was in, and it was something that she aspired to be. Okay, so okay, so that's what she was trying to do, seeking the blessing for the new role. Okay, and ultimately, two questions came up. Two questions came up from Joe. Sonia, do you have the skills? Unfortunately, because she's purely a programmer, she had to say no. And Joe was asking the next question, do you have the experience? Well, obviously she has always been a programmer all this while, she has to say no. So based on that, and I can't blame Joe because obviously you don't want to set up your star performer to failure because obviously she does not have the skills or experience. And Joe knew that the other manager had to have someone who can run on day one for that role. Hence, that's why she said no to Sonia. But that's where Sonia was actually telling me the situation and it resonated with me so much that because it happens to me. So a little that is a little bit of a backstory, but a quick intro for both myself and Selva today. My name is Mike. I call myself a global co-founder and roughly about 18 plus years of HR practitioner experience in talent acquisition and talent development. And my business objective is to help my clients achieve staff happiness, believing in the fact that once you have happier staff, you have plentiful of customers and happier customers, and you will drive up your business results. Okay. And over to Selva for a quick intro as well. Selva? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Hi, hi. Thanks for having us today. Afternoon, Friday afternoon. Very good, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Selva, Selva Nagapun. And uh, I've been in the industry for the last 25 years, uh, basically uh, doing a lot of uh, big, uh, large scale events, right? Uh, on different technology verticals. One of the biggest events that we do in uh, Penang is Epcon Asia. Uh, which is a semiconductor event that we have been doing for the last 14 years. 
uh, in Penang. Uh, and we do things like Bangtech Asia, Smart Cities Asia. And uh, very recently together with MDAC, uh, we did Malaysia Tech Month. So that's the third run. Uh, we started Malaysia Tech Week in uh, 2019, became fully virtual in 2020, and again, virtual in 2021. So that's the space that we're involved in. Uh, so we have also evolved and pivoted to the digital space uh, from the face-to-face -face training, yeah. So that's a little bit about me, yeah. We'll talk more, yeah. Thank you. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Selva. And basically, what our session today, our sharing session today is all about is really winning the talent war. And like I mentioned just now, as in the, in the preview, really are a lot of people out there really believe that hiring the best talent is really what it takes to win the talent war. Hey, we have to go and win the talent war. So let's go and hire big time. We, we go and interview and hire and whatever not. But then again, many do not realize that that's only half the battle half the battle won at best because really what takes what goes on after they are hired they are now your staff you might have lots more work to be done and we'll try to actually share that with you in in this particular session and that's where our session is aptly uh, saying strategies and not just strategies and innovations that's going to win you your talent war and in this sharing there are two key, two key strategies in terms of the transformation plus the innovation side. The first two is really to create cultural affinity in your organization. And for that, of course, positive cultural affinity. You don't want also culture, negative culture within your organization, obviously. But the other more important point is also how you want to tweak your talent development. And this one, no doubt, a lot of companies will say, hey, I already have talent development in my organization. So what else is there? But there are certain angle to it that probably may be missing. And that's why we have cases like Sonia, or even my case, that there are stumbling blocks in them growing a career internally. And obviously, the innovation bit will be what Selva will be actually presenting shortly and sharing with you shortly. REPL as the leading age innovation tool. Okay, that's in a nutshell what we're going to share today. And going back to my friend Sonia, she was sad, obviously. Who wouldn't be? Good, as, good, good appraisals, all confident, wanting to actually say, hey, boss, Joe, I want to actually take up this role because the next role has become available. But being turned down with two no's, you don't have this, you don't have that. Obviously, you're going to be sad. Well, I mean, don't take my words for it. Don't take Sonia's word for it. Maybe would anyone care to help me do a quick poll? Same slider code, you'll probably see it in your mobile phone now. Just pick one. This one, pick one time. Which one would first, the first reaction that comes to you, what's the first emotional reaction that comes to you if you were in the same situation? Is this Malaysian mentality? Many okay. just accept and go on. <laughs> but that's that's also I think part of the issue as well. They just keep quiet, but the seed is already in there, and that, that's why they don't voice out, they don't communicate. But the seed is already in there. They don't. Uh, they probably feel disheartened. But anyway, let's see what the majority of us say. Feel free to share. It. Your first thought that comes. Wow. Surprisingly, yeah. Huh? Like you say, Vivian, <laughs> Malaysian mentality. There are people who accept that. <laughs> not, not vocal enough, you know. It's not the, mm. the nature to be very vocal, challenge the boss, and just like take it. Or mm -hmm. after too pressure, then then quit. <laughs> you said this certain. Why? No. Oh, coming. The aggressive <laughs> people coming. <laughs> they wake up after the coffee. <laughs> okay. 
But anyway, this poll will be in the background. If you're still seeing this poll, by all means, still share. Uh, uh, I don't know whether there may be other people joining after this as well, but if they do, I think they, they will still be able to see this poll. They may not be able to, they, to scan the QR code, but you can still lock it in when you're ready. But anyway, I shall, may I proceed with him? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Good, good. Now it's a lot more exploring the dream role. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think this coincides a little bit with what I, I, what I had when I ran this poll some time back. Uh, both actually felt sad and disheartened. And one really started thinking about, hmm, I, maybe I should explore outside. But if you actually then see, sadly, both this actually leading staff to being unhappy. The seed is actually planted. But like Vivian said just now correctly, well, whether it is the truth, I think there's, there's more to dissect. Commute or Malaysians being you know, not vocal enough, not being able to communicate. But is it staff not wanting to communicate? Or is it something else that prevents the individual within that organizations not to communicate? I think there's a, 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 there's a food for thought, right? But ultimately, whatever it is, the seed of this would have plant, been planted and staff unhappiness would probably lead them to be disengaged. And this one, we are not, obviously this one we are talking about Sonia as one individual, but if you have a bigger team in Malaysia, across region, across the world, across geographical, then that may actually be a bigger problem than that, but just one individual. When staff gets disengaged, we know how they, they are, right? Um, just imagine if, if a new joiner comes in today, on board today, for example, 1st of October, they would probably be very gung-ho, very happy, and probably when there's a meeting, they sit right in front of the, the room, well, if pre-pandemic, that is, right in front of the room or log in early, offering a lot of inputs, offering a lot of points of views, but now when they start being disengaged, they'll probably be at the back hands folded. If the room is dark, they'll probably be sitting right at the back and just, I don't know, doing some other things, but generally disengaged, disconnected from all your discussions. And the key is, if it is not actually addressed early, the signals are not addressed early and picked up early by the manager, it starts impacting performances and KPIs. Or probably there are lots more MCs, a lot more things that may come in. And also here, uh, I'll probably pass over to Selva to actually then say, with regards to actually nailing this and you know, uh, curbing this at the, at the onset, what can be done? What can we do with innovations, with REPO? Selva, over to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mike. Okay, uh, well, when we're going to talk about REPL, yeah, okay, let's uh, study something. REPL stands for rapid learning, okay? And uh, when we talk about REPL, we're not just going to talk about REPL, we're just going to talk about digital learning, okay? Uh, it can be any digital platform, but how the entire escalation of learning has happened uh, in the last 24 months, okay? In fact, yesterday we had a meeting with, with a big bank and the adoption rate to digital learning was about 94%. Okay, that is an amazing number to think about. Uh, but quite surprisingly, the way it was achieved is by force. Okay, so we were talking to the guys there and they said, uh, yeah, we will nudge them, we will tell them, we'll try to get them into the system and answer the questions. Okay, so is that engaging enough? Like I think Mike, you just spoke about staff disengagement, right? So what, uh, what technology or innovation can do Okay, uh, for all these l and initiatives that you know, we, are, we are working on, okay? One of the thing is, you know, we have actually experienced higher engagement uh, with the help of a tool like REPL, okay? And again, I'm trying to say here is it's not just REPL. REPL is the mobile learning part for us. We do have an LMS as well. And we don't talk about LMS because most of the people now, uh, at least during the pandemic has opted you know, of having LMS in their system already. So we're talking about bite-sized learning here. We're talking about mobile learning here, okay? So it's a very cost-effective solution. You don't have to book a big room, bring in the 30 people, 40 people. Okay, it's all through the app, right? Uh, and uh, the engagement 
and the way we capture user sentiments via polls and survey. Uh, when we did the poll earlier, uh, when Mike did that, okay, we could see, uh, and like what Vivian said, okay, Malaysians are so scared to highlight their concern, okay? You're so scared to uh, go and give your opinion, okay? But what a digital platform can create for you is a very safe environment, a very secure environment, okay? So that you can actually express your opinion without being very biased about it, without your boss being beside you. Can you imagine sitting in a phase of, and you know, like you're facing this person that uh, was always like forcing you to do things. And that is not a very safe environment. So platforms like Rappel or digital, any digital platform that for that matter, has created uh, a, a very safe environment for people to go and learn, people to go and express uh, without any biasness. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, it's also just in time. Okay, so you don't have to go for a training today. Wait for another three months to calculate your ROI. It's very immediate with all the analytics. You know, uh, the back end of all the systems are amazing. You know, like as an L and D manager or an HR manager or even a line manager. Okay you'll be able to actually get a lot of information uh, about this thing, okay? Um, and most importantly, okay, let's say if I go for a workshop, a two days workshop, physical workshop, okay? Followed by coaching, okay? But what I really want is the long-term learning retention. I want to sustain my learning, okay? So what do I do? Okay, let's say, let's take a simple example of you're staying in KL, you're you are just attended a course in Intercontinental Kuala Lumpur, okay? And you're at 5.30, you're sitting in the train to go back to say Klana Jaya, okay? Right after the training, if you're getting some nudge, a soft nudge telling you that this is what you learn, okay, take this quiz or take this uh, simulation, okay? So it's actually going to reinforce what you just learned. And that is the whole idea about uh, bite-sized learning, mobile learning, digital platforms, okay? And of course, uh, for people like us, who needs to present a report uh, to, to the board of directors, uh, to the managers, the analytics will actually play a very important role. And you just kind of go and tweak it or what, you know, it's, it's what it is, that's it, okay? So I think, you know, that that's the, those are things that, you know, a digital platform or rapper can do for you. Yeah, uh, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. You wanna touch on this screen? Pardon me? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. All right, so um, we have made it very simple, right? Okay, everyone's question is, okay, I've got this deck of, you know, PowerPoint, you know, I've got all these very conventional learning documents. How are we going to uh, get on board? How are we going to do it? So, so I think we have made, made it very simple. Okay, we call it replication, crafting, engaging content. Okay, a boring 200 page, but I'll, I'll just give you an example of automotive industry who came on board uh, for their board of directors till their uh, operators, okay? Who are actually the, the panel beating guys, you know, uh, the spray guys. We have actually created content with scenar scenarios, okay? So that it is very engaging. And that is how we actually take them, you know? So all they have to do is give us a raw content, content and we will convert it into engaging content, okay? It can be staff onboarding. It, uh, as I said earlier, okay, it can be for the board of directors, board matters, right till staff onboarding. When you hire, you know, all your onboarding thing can be done on this. Okay, so that you don't really uh, waste a lot of time. Uh, for instance, okay, let's say you have already hired someone. Okay, you don't have to wait for a month for them to give the notice and come to you before you start the experience with them. Okay, you start giving them bite-sized learning about the company about the job, about the colleagues, about the culture, everything that you need to tell, okay? And basically when you talk about platform, it is not just platform, of course content is important, but most important is the mindset, whether they want to get into it. Because especially yesterday when uh, me and my colleague, you know, when we're having this meeting with, with this bank, we thought, yeah, good. You have got a fantastic system. You have got good system, but People are still not coming on board, which of just forcing them to get adoption rate. Okay, we don't want to go to that stage. So we have to actually like take one step back and see whether these guys, what are their pain points? What is a problem statement the client is giving? Okay, 
Like the friend, friend is telling that, okay, my problem is actually to get them engaged, then let's start with a digital transformation within the l and department itself, and then take it forward. Okay, so that's the kind of things that we do. And of course, towards the end, if you see it on the screen, that's what comes out on your phone. Okay, I don't think in the interest of time, we don't, uh, yeah, we, we could not do the demo, but I'm sure that's one of the agenda that Mike has got, you know, like if anyone is interested, uh, we would like uh, to actually like go to a demo about rapper, okay? And like mm -hmm. what Mike mentioned earlier, it is not just about a platform, it's about the mindset. And I think I saw in the slides, you know, yeah. again and again, Mike, what he's saying is, you know, if we don't change the mindset, you can have the best of system, but nothing changes. That's right. Right? Okay. Okay, man. Thanks, Elva. No problem. So what's really there for REPL as a tool, or any innovations for that matter, is really to actually engage with your staff. Just imagine, if the system pushes certain learning, certain nuggets to your staff, and after one week, after two weeks, the system or the, the, the individual did not complete, as a manager, you will get an alert and say, hey, one of your guys did not complete. So then the question starts coming and say, hey, why is this person not completing? Maybe I will not step in, I'll give it another week. Not completing yet, then the intervention can start to come in. Otherwise, if without systems or innovations like this, as a manager, you have many staff to take care of, you may, you may lose sight of all of them. But with innovations, then it becomes a little bit obvious to say, who should I be paying attention more? And that's why nothing would actually get missed, hopefully with innovations. But obviously, it's all about humans. We don't know. We don't know what are the things that are being picked up or not being picked up. But in this case, if the performance, again, is actually not curbed and mitigated, what happens? It's to staff turnover. Hey, my, my manager just doesn't care. He just doesn't care. I'm not even... He just doesn't seem to care that I'm there or not there, you know, whether I exist or not, my inputs are not taken and, and, and all of those. But then again, when the staff resigns, the ironic thing is very interesting. What happens? What happens typically when the staff resigns? Boom. First question that comes, hey, uh, you got an offer. What did they offer you? Oh, got the promotion as well. What are you being promoted to? Maybe, maybe let me speak to HR and let me see what we can do. But that seems to be like after the fact, isn't it a, a little bit too, too late? But that's the key thing. I mean, typically, I'll, you know, people will cringe at, at this kind of, uh, hey, why are you actually talking about me now after I'm trying to resign? I'm trying to serve my notice and whatever not. Why can't it be taken earlier? But from a practitioner, HR practitioner should, practitioner point of view, this is actually quite wrong, quite a bad move, because actually, in fact, for three reasons. One, it actually solves the situation for one of your staff. Only one of your staff, right? What about your other staff? If them, they come again, you know, doing the same thing, are you going to counter again? And it sends a very, very wrong message to your existing remaining staff. Hey, you want to get a, a good pay rise and a promotion? Go out and get another offer. Come back and discuss. Is that what you want your, your other staff to be, to be doing? Obviously not, right? But the last and more important situation is that it's not really solving the root cause. And that's why the cycle keeps repeating itself. If another staff comes and resign, then probably that's what you do. I mean, if you want to actually retain you are not really solving the root cause. But then again, Mike, you're probably asking, what is the root cause, really? really? What is the root cause? And I can tell you, the root cause is really in the culture of the organization. I think someone actually pointed out correctly in the, in the club poll earlier, culture, culture of the company. So let me actually do a reverse engineering a little bit, if I may. What if? What if there is positive culture in your organization? Assuming that that's your organization there, okay? What if there is positive culture surrounding your, 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 your organization? This positive culture is like 
a magnet. It exudes itself. The 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 it exudes the positivity in itself. You know, in in a sense like the agility, the promotions, good communications, good team leaders, good management, management as directions. All the positivity exudes themselves onto your staff. All the good things, whatever that is, whatever that you just point out in the club poll earlier, all the positive things will actually give the positivity to each and every individual, each and every staff in your organization. But because of the fact that these staff are so positive about their own company, what would you do when you have your raya or festival and whatever not? What do you do when you get around? Hey, you're still in that company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there for a long time. Oh, yeah, very, very long time already. What do you do? Word of mouth, right? Positive word of mouth. And I always tell my clients, there's one litmus test. How many of us, or maybe you can test this out with your team, how many of you and your team can actually say, hey, I'm actually grooming my kids to come into my company? Or oh, if my company actually uh, does E&E, &E, um, I don't know, AI manufacturing, AI or whatever, my company is big time on that. I'm going to groom my sons and daughters or my, my relatives and work friends, close friends to work in my company when they graduate. How many of us can actually say that? Or likewise, how many of us, or not, let's not say us, but how many companies out there can actually say, who staff and actually say, no, 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 I don't want my, my close friends and families to come to work. Because this company, hola, I'm just surviving here. You know, that, that two sides of the coin. If the first one is true, then congratulations, you're on the way. There's positivity in the company. And this positivity, I can tell you, it exudes themselves upwards as well to your external talents. Such that, I mean, there's this buzzword in the talent acquisition space, which is talent attraction strategy, which is basically just employer branding. How, how is our branding to the uh, external market outside, talents outside? We, we have this, we have that. How's Google doing the branding? How's Facebook, Amazon doing their branding? These are big companies, companies where people would probably line up to go for interviews. They have very strong branding and it is because for a reason, right? So if all this positivity can exude themselves, these are natural organic strategy that um, attracts external talents into your company. And if really this nirvanic situation can be achieved, essentially you really could have actually done a few things. First, curving staff turnover because you already sustain your staff. They're happy enough. They, they have the agility to actually rotate into other roles, get promoted, have the good bosses, teammates, good management team, company directions is very positive. They know exactly where they're heading in the in X number of years down the road. Why should they actually ever leave, right? Because the only other reasons that they probably leave is dollars and cents. But then with the dollars and cents, it sucks outside, culture sucks outside. Nothing beats good culture of a company. And that is so difficult to beat. Dollars and cents probably are, are take X amount and that's it, right? The other angle, it created staff happiness in your organization. They're happy to stay. And they're actually voicing a word of mouth, positive word of mouth with that. And of course, then it wins the talent war. At least the first half. So think, think, first half, you're winning. But like I said, the second half, it's what really matters. Because how you're going to groom them, develop them, that's going to sustain them. And this is actually echoed by a survey of HR leaders, global HR leaders, quite recently, June 2021, organization culture actually plays critical role in this time of change and uncertainty. Well, this is change, this is uncertainty, isn't it, the pandemic? And it is a difference between company struggling or thriving. So it is really the truth. You know, culture is the key component here. Okay, so then again, going back to my friend Sonia, what is the aspect that she was after in the positive culture of the company? It's really career growth. Hey, I want to grow because I've been a senior programmer for many years. I, I believe I can, 
I have the capacity to grow and project manager is my aspiration. But sadly, the designs of the systems and process in the company has failed Sonia. And actually, I think uh, there's a question here. I'm keeping watch of the question as well. Annie, uh, there's a question from Annie who says, what could the project, uh, or rather what would Joe have done when Sonia was actually asking the blessing? So I'll probably answer that here, okay? So most often than not, when we are busy with our project, especially in consulting, well, I mean, most of the time, I mean, it just follows that for whatever roles that we are hired, it follows that we are 100% responsible to deliver 100% of that role. And especially more so for consulting them because those are billable utilization hours. Hey, which client did you pop in the last two hours or whatever? It is important. Otherwise, you are not, you know, you are being utilizing quite space, you know, on the bench, right? So 100%, if not more, your evenings and weekends are working, projects, delivering for your clients. So really, whatever time that we have or one person has, they will just take a rest or spend time with their family. Really, they'll probably say, no time, I'm so tired. I don't want to actually be thinking about, you know, L&D, learning and development, LMS and whatever. Not. So there's really no time. And the other thing, and I echo with this as well, and, and really a lot of people would echo as well. There's no follow-through action. Because most LMS will actually be just, uh, okay, Mike, you have this syllabus. You have not completed it. Please complete it by so-and-so. And once you completed it, it's a tick in the box. And probably then they ask you a very, very, well, to me, at least it's an ironic question. Do you print it or do you want to save it? But what comes out of it? That's the question, right? But more often than not, it's just a tick in the box and a cert that you have. What comes out of it? No one comes and say, hey, Mike, I saw you actually completed that. Or Sonia, I saw you completed that. Hmm, I think it's time for us to sit down and do something else. If that ever happens, that's good. And that's probably slight sneak preview into Annie's question. Seriously, the lack of the follow-up action is actually the reason. Let me read this. And this is also where I would like to pass it to Selva for a brief uh, discussion and sharing a sneak preview into what Grapple can do in this space. Selva. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, so what Rappel can do uh, in that space, okay, the design, the process, okay, uh, we have got a lot of critical information that will come out of our dashboard. Okay, if you really look at it, we're talking about users are assigned to topics what is relevant for them. So like what Mike mentioned earlier, okay, there is no follow through, but with a tool like Rappel or digital uh, learning platform, we are able to do all these things, okay? Our info can be delivered as micro topics. That means I will go and study about a learner and you know, like I will actually like give him whatever he wants to learn based on his need, okay? Because when you talk about people who wants to learn, I don't know, how I want my learning experience to be. Uh, do I want it to be in a social collaboration? Do I want it to be in a gamified learning? Or do I want it to be in, to be in, to be in a personalized learning? Okay, so when you have all those questions running in mind, this is where we can design uh, based on the learner's uh, competency level, right? Uh, and we'll be able to measure before and after results from learning. Again, you know, like uh, most of the training, this is where they fail, okay? Uh, you send them for training, uh, they are going through, let it be, you know, like two days of workshop or a very long certification program Okay, they mark and they pass, they get a certification, but after that is no follow through. So our dashboard will actually tell you that, you know, like we can actually like address that by using analytics, okay? So that will actually tell you where you are standing, okay? Uh, and this is uh, done without intimidating the others, right? Okay, let's say you've got 10 people in the class. Okay, every time you want to do something, you will ask yourself, is that gonna be silly questions? Is that going to be something that people laugh at, okay? But in an environment like this, you don't face all that, okay? Because you are learning at your own pace, okay? 
and actually uh, your manager is actually designing the program to learn based on your understanding. And if you are not there yet, you can go back and do it again until you reach a stage that you understand the topic fully. Okay, so knowledge gaps can be bridged by scenarios or CV create scenarios. Okay, let it be like I mentioned earlier example, okay, the automotive industry. Let it be the guy in the plant or the man, you know, the board, board of directors or the top management, okay? They will have competence, uh, competency gap and that can be actually addressed through all these analytics, okay? So data from wrapper is for real business impact, okay? Any, okay, there you go. So, so that's, that's how the journey is, right? Okay, um, well, uh, if you have more time, you know, we could have gone into that real thing, you know, on the, on the mobile, but of course, all of us press for time. So what you get is like soft nudges, okay? So I don't come and force upon you, okay? But I'll tell you, hey, look here, you have done this uh, last week and uh, you have not completed, okay? Please go and complete, okay? So it is not like school, the teacher comes to Rotan and said, okay, hey, do it or what, but soft nudge, okay? And they will compete. It's a very healthy competition that we create using all the soft nudges, okay? And then we have got performance review, you know, and all these things, you know, uh, which is already there. We have got videos. Okay, let's say if it's a very heavy topic, um, for example, you know, compliance topics for bankers, okay, where you need to go and see what are the central bankers talking about, what is happening in the anti-money laundering space. So those are very, can be pretty, technical and heavy. So we do have a lot of videos that you can upload into the system. You can have uh, the uh, blueprint, uh, the white paper that can be uploaded, okay? For all the specific top topics, okay? So they follow the instruction, you know, very, very clear instructions given. And they have made it so easy that you don't really need our help to do this, okay? On the back end, as a uh, L&D manager, you'll be able to do this on your own. And as I mentioned earlier, the learning path, okay? The learning path is so personalized, okay? So I can be fast uh, or Mike can be faster than me and I want to catch up, right? So I should know that, okay, I'm at this level, in order for me to achieve that, I need to complete this module. I got to watch that video. I'll probably have a peer group with you that I want to actually have a discussion. So that's the kind of learning path that we create using the application. Yeah, so that's that's amount of innovation that has gone through uh, all this this application, and of course it was fast tracked uh, by the pandemic. Okay, the adoption rate has increased so much. Uh, for instance, you know, like sitting in the train, LRT, MRT, you know, you're actually learning using a bite size, and quite interestingly, you know, like you know they did a survey. Everybody thought gamers are the young group, but no, I think that's only consists of about. 32% uh, of uh, gamers are young, okay? And you'll be surprised, you know, like uh, the amount of people are above 50 who are actually enjoy, uh, no, engaged in gaming. So that's why we brought in a lot of gamification uh, uh, into, into this application, okay, to make it more interesting and engaging. Yep. Thanks, Mike. No problem. Over to you. So coming back to this, it will actually take care of the fact that there's no follow through action. Like what uh, Silva actually just said, you know, there are notifications to the manager as well on the readiness of staff. Let's just say, for example, if a role becomes available, let me quickly look into my database now of my staff, who's ready? What's the readiness? Ah, this guy has this, this guy has this. So think about it. It's, it's much more insights that you can draw from rather than just whatever that's in here. Okay. So let's move on. Once you have that, that's where we need this, the, 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 the thing is to tweak your talent development. And that's where, not to say companies don't have talent development function, they do, but they have to actually future ready their future development even further by tweaking a little bit. And this really is what Annie is asking here. So just imagine, every one of us, we were actually agreeing on the fact that every one of us is hired 100% for the, our role, period. 
But what if we are not 100% for our role? What if it is only 95% of that? With the remaining 5%, this is an arbitrary number. This, in this example, I'm just giving 5%. If you imagine 5% is of a week, that's only two hours per week. In a month, that's only one day per month. Which means in this one day per month, the individual could spend time in the future as fire role. And this is something that is formalized within the HR systems, within uh, the, the capacity of each of the role, such that there is that percentage of time for aspired future role. Just imagine, I mean, that discussion is gonna be very different, right? Tell me, what are you going to actually interested to do, Mr. Candidate or Mr. Talent, Miss Talent? And wow, my boss is asking me what I want to do two years down the road. I thought I should be, you, you know, you should be telling me what my current goal is. Yes, of course. That one we have already been discussed during the interview. You probably know that, but I would also plan what I'd like to plan your future in this company. Wow, how many organizations, how many managers could probably do that? If any one of you do that, kudos to you. But seriously, not many. And that's why we have this particular situation where there's no time for skills development, there's no time for experience gaining activities in every one of the staff. But if 5% is actually set aside for future readiness of your staff, each and every one of the staff, in a year, the person has actually 12 days to actually gain all this skills via learning management systems. Say, for example, in Sonia's case, she could probably be allowed. She is going to be allowed because it's formal. Okay, formal to each and every role in your organizations. She'll be actually tagging along her project manager in review meetings with the stakeholders, uh, probably gathering user requirements, confirming requirements, uh, conflict resolution with vendors and whatever not. So ultimately then, she has all this real world experience and these are not arbitrary, you know, uh, sort of internal environment. These are real environment. These are life environment that experiences that she's feeling. Okay. So push that out of the way, design it. Like I said, it is arbitrary 5%, but whatever percentage you want more or less, it's up to you. But the key is ultimately there should be time set aside formally for each and every one of your staff for future development for the individual, okay? But the key is it does not stop there. Because again, we always rely on whatever that's in between here and say, I remember, yeah, one staff you probably remember. If you have staff across regions, 500 staff, let's say for example, you probably not remember especially in January, you assign this one person, one project, and in December, you're expected to say, hey, what ha happened to, to, to that project? Yeah? What have you done? Yeah? Chances are he or she is not going to remember. You are not going to remember as well. Even if you remember, it's very vague details and how you're going to be expected to do a good appraisal. But regular discussions means as and when there are things happening, say, for example, even if it is formal, or informal. It could be a corridor discussion that says, hey, Sonia, I heard that you went for a stakeholders engagement meeting yesterday, a review meeting, and um, Mr. So-and-so project manager gave you an opportunity to stand in front of the C-suite and you presented. I heard you did a fantastic job. What if you actually met your boss and your boss come and put a big pat on your back and say, even though it is informal? That is really like, wow. This is, you know, a big booster, you know, adrenaline booster, okay? So regular formal discussions must be there, but just imagine if, even if it is informal, but that's also only half the key here. The other key, complete documentations. When, whenever there are discussions that actually talk about future readiness of your staff, it must be documented because imagine, you as the manager, you are also looking to progress upwards as and when your opportunity are ready. And your staff should be looking to progress into your, 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 your role, which means if there's a change of manager, things are not lost with you. 
as long as their P files, their personal files can be accessed, all these informations and discussion that has actually been taking place can be accessed and there is continuity in terms of the discussions and communications with your team, with your staff. And that is crucial. Regular discussions and complete documentations. Okay? And just imagine, now that's where the situation comes in, isn't it? Imagine, Sonia, again, next year, seeking appraisal. What's going to happen? 12 days in that year that she's having skills in terms of learning LMS formal. This is, again, formal because probably PMP and whatever not, she tagged along in terms of review meetings. I'm not a PM, so I don't know what kind of activities goes into that, but I'm sure you know, but uh, stakeholders engagement meetings and whatever not. She has skills, she has experience. Obviously then, whoever it is, whether it's Sonia or someone else would get the role positively, okay? Joe would great, help, you know, very happily oblige to actually give the blessing. But that's pointing it to the, this point. Talent development really lends itself to sustainability of your staff. And like I said, if the positive culture affinity is there, you have good bosses, you have good teammates, you have career progressions, you have your agility to promote and pro you know, progress in your, in your company, your boss suddenly says, hey, good job and whatever not. Those are impromptu, but it leads to, why should I leave? Why should I ever leave? And anyway, if I want to, you know, the, the, the system allows me to actually spend a certain percentage of my time learning, picking up skills and training for it. Which, where, which company would have that, right? Maybe outside companies give me a few thousand more, one or two thousand more. But what about the culture? Nothing can beat that, right? Okay. And this is where I actually um, developed what I call the HR cash model. Coincidentally, it spells cash, but I'll share with you why. There are two elements that actually contribute to staff happiness in your organization. Incoming external talents, which whom we try to hire, okay? And ex, your internal staff as well, whom we try to engage with internally. Ultimately, it actually creates happier staff in your organization. And with happier staff, you have plentiful of customers because they just like to deal with your company. Your staff is so good. It, you know, they, they, they really know that you are dependable, the staff are dependent, dependable and all. And naturally, very naturally, you get better business results, but better bottom lines. And that's where you create positive cultural affinity. And incidentally, that's where it spells cash, cultural affinity for staff happiness. Yeah. And interestingly, I actually created this logo as a reciprocal arrow, CA to SH. CA points to SH. Because technically speaking, do we have cultural affinity first? And hence, then we have staff happiness? Or is it the reverse? No, it should be staff happiness first and then we have cultural affinity. Oh, okay, it's as good as actually saying which one comes first, chicken or the egg. It's really no clear answer, right? But the key is both needs to be in existence in order for the positivity to exist, period. And it's based on trust, humility, and empathy within the organization. Okay. Oh, and I always... This is very interesting, uh, your logo. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is where also I would like to borrow a, a, a phrase from Sir Richard Branson. Clients really do not come first. Your employees come first. Because if you took care of your employees, they naturally will take care of your clients. Period. Just think about it. It's, it is just how it is, isn't it? I mean, it shouldn't be, you should be putting the, 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 the what, what is that phrase? The horse behind the cart or whatever. But I, I think you, you know what I mean, right? You put things, the priority in its right place. Okay? And your employees must come first. So coming back to our original notion, winning your talent war is not really about hiring the best talent. Well, at least not fully, because the other half really now is 
the constant engagement and open communications you have with your team, right? And that's where, you know, uh, like I think what we discussed, Vivian, um, right at the beginning, a hey, religion's like that, lah. you know, we don't like to bring up things and whatever. But if I'm right, if I, if I am, have to write for that role, let's say, for example, I should speak up. Because I have, I have the skills, I have the experience, I should speak up. But why am, uh, am I suffering, so-called suffering uh, in silence and say, and put myself into an unhappy situation, but I try to get out of the company to go somewhere else to find that happiness or to find that my aspired role, my aspiration. Why can't I just open my mouth and actually talk to my boss, say for example. But then again, if I open my mouth, my boss also is not having that mentality to reciprocate. It points to what problem? The cultural problem. Both needs to be in place. The trust, the humility and empathy needs to be in place. It must be met somewhere in between in order for that magic, that positivity, that cultural affinity to take place. Simple as that. It takes two. Okay? So that's where the proposition here, really, if you want to win the talent war, three-step three step cultural transformation plus innovation, of course. Now it's the IR or HR 4.0 in this case. You need to tweak and build the natural and organic talent attraction strategy. You can probably do a, uh, you know, a front page, corporate com and whatever not, but nothing beats word of mouth, you know, right? As we actually just said this now, the litmus test, you know, if your staff can be the one, the ambassador of your company, that is the most beautiful thing and is the most sustainable thing as a talent attraction strategy for any company, okay? And ultimately, you must build a culture of open communication in your company. Trust, humility, and empathy must be there. And ensure future readiness, and that's where the X plus Y, the percentage of time set aside formally for each individual role in the organization. It cannot be just 100%. Well, probably in the good old days, our forefathers, yes, that's probably true because everyone lives their entire professional lifetime with one skills. Agree? And they, they retire with that one skills. Nowadays, you, 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 you want just one skills, you're going to be out of job for soon. You know? And that's where we have the gig economy, right? I mean, skills for hire, so to speak. So to speak. You know? And we have to have, uh, you know, um, a technical guy who is also a marketing guru, SEO, marketing expert, and whatever not. So they must have multiple things in their pocket, so to speak. So we must ensure future readiness plus, okay? And of course, the plus one, innovation. We cannot just forget innovation. And in this case, rapalization, of course. How can we actually use innovation as a tool? Because now I think, well, me getting old, Definitely, I, I, I find myself, you know, sometimes, hmm, I thought I did that. No, 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 I, I, I think, let me look at my notes. I find myself doing that much, much more. If I miss my notes, that's it, I've forgotten, okay? So we must have tools in order to ensure that things are kept documented properly, things are kept in place. And even if this guy, this manager has hired 500 people, is, has moved on to a different organization, different path, in the organization, someone else taking over can actually pick up. So otherwise, just imagine, you would have the new manager having the same conversation with all your 500 staff again. Tell me where you are, what has happened eh, in the last one year? Kind of uh, very ironic, isn't it? So ultimately, innovation is the way to go. And if you have this, cultural transformation journey and the innovation in place, what's happening is that you have optimized processes for your TA, your talent acquisition and talent development. It's really optimized because it's, it's what your company needs in order to hire the best, develop the best and sustain the best. And you have positive experiences for your external talents, obviously, because your staff speaks highly of the company. Your staff are having positive experience then. Of course, external talents will hear, mm, yeah, I, I, I probably want to actually come to these organizations because 
they have low turnover, they have low staff turnover, they have this, 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 they have that, and who wouldn't come to join the company? And that's where the organic strategies and natural st strategies comes in for your employer branding and talent attraction. And with that optimized process just now, you're really consistently hiring the best talents in the market. And end day, obviously, you have high performance and sustainable culture. Okay. And that's the tip of the, the mountain already, you're reaching the top of the mountain. Okay. So, any questions at this point in time? I, I saw that. Um, at least from my side. Uh, can I take a question, Vivian? Okay, thank you. Uh, Sean here actually was asking, you know, uh, if I may, Sean, um, because since you DM me, so if I may actually uh, articulate that question, uh, how do you keep your employees happy when the company is going through an impending merger? Competitor offer 30, 40% pay difference, seeing one by one leaving for greener pasture. I guess um, things in life, I always believe one thing, you control as much as you can. There are many other things that's out of your control. And I think sometimes, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm, I have not been, you know, Part of my life has not been in the professional life. It's not in the merger and acquisitions and whatever. Not so I'm not so sure about that space. But I guess those are things that may not be within the control of even senior management team, perhaps. If it happens from global or whatever, it happens, right? So as much as a manager is, I think one of the key takeaways as a good manager is to be able to say, well, in so far that I've been in the role and within my control, I have actually developed and groomed resources and talents in my organizations and teams such that they become so valuable for my team. And up until some time in the future, they find that they no longer find greener pastures in here, then they go out. Actually, we should draw you know, uh, uh, happiness, if I may, from there that we are grooming them as such. Obviously, you know, we cannot actually sustain everyone forever. Things, circumstances change. Everyone has different circumstances. When you're a fresh graduate, when you are getting married and when kids and, you know, next time when you have, you know, elderly, aged parents and whatever not. So there are different stages of life. But as long as you can sustain them in your organization and they are happy doing what they do, progressing in their career, up until sometime when things like this happen, in your case, Sean, it's a merger, nothing can be done. But in the case where they decided to part ways, it is not because you have done, not done something, but it is just because there is no more challenge in the company. Okay, so I guess greener pastures, there will always be, but as managers, we hope that the greener pasture is in here, rather than out there. Okay, I hope that answers your question. So, John, any other questions? I'm open for our questions here. Vivian, anything from your side or any DMs from your side? I think we shall take one more question if there's any from the floor. Can they actually I... unmute? That's yeah, probably... yeah. Anyone oh, okay. also can unmute. Yes, okay. yes if there, yeah. there's any questions. Sometimes I, uh, I, I type very slow also. <laughs> By all means, if you want, just unmute and ask if it is quicker that way. I think the struggle, if no one is asking, I'm just going to ask. I think the struggle now with the uh, digitalizations hmm. and whatever automation is, um, the talent don't feel they are being treasured like how you say, because they could be with one process in place, it can actually replace many, especially so uh, I'm just trying to think along that line, you know, how to play a role when there is huge stuff, either they wanted to outsource to someone and um, there is uh, this struggle, you know, hmm. being a HR, maybe the strategy has changed too fast uh, that you we want to have more um, the worker that is not 
permanent with us. You know, mm. we, we outsource mm-hmm. a task. So immediately I have like, wow, 500 people or maybe 20 people I need to. So, so, so I wanted to take your input. You know, mm. at one end we say people is talent, but on the other hand, when this comes too fast, how to play out? Yeah. But I guess, I guess um, it goes very much into what we were just discussing just now. If it is a global initiative direction or whatever, nothing can be done per se. Yeah. In a nutshell, per se, nothing can be done. But, but I guess in, if we go back, say, for example, to let's say, imagine if uh, 10 years ago, this team was created you know, from elsewhere coming to Malaysia, say, for example, because of various reasons that the, the climate here, the environment here is the best to actually sustain this team. And now, 10 years later, the, the organization decided that this, this team is no longer needed here. But the question then is, I guess, is re, it's, the question is always, is this team really now working at its most optimum to deliver what was expected? Or has it, um, I don't know, I mean, um, global typically compares, hey, I think this location now, the cost is better than that and whatever not. There are a lot more cost involved, cost um, considerations involved. But then we, we should always question if the team is the highest performance culture in the organization and it should be able to deliver at the most optimal, regardless of cost. The, the bottom line should actually matter. So I guess, again, probably if you look at current situation, has that, has that evolved, has that journey evolved to such a stage where perhaps another organization, another locality has caught up to this to this locality, and hence, in comparison, cost structure consideration that one seems to be better, deliverable outputs that one seems to be better now. But ten years ago, this was better. Then the question becomes: Why has this probably dropped? Why has that guy caught up, so to speak? You know, mm. because mm. otherwise, global would probably look at it and say, "Hey, you cannot you cannot touch this team because it's still the best delivering team in." The region, say for example, no, don't talk about cost structure. It's still the best uh, delivery team. Don't touch it. If the if it is not broken, when why 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 break it, right? You don't need to actually do anything. But I think a lot of situations like this happens because uh, it's just a matter of hey, if I don't improve, other people are improving out there. I need to always be kept up on my toes. So the question is, are we are we doing that? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess disruptions is probably coming. They still need yeah. the people, but they tell us they want uh data scientists, for example. Yeah. You know? And yeah, so so probably those are a bit realistic uh, yeah, situation to I deal do, with. I, I agree with you, Vivian. I mean that's a sad truth because a lot of times companies um without naming names, but uh I think you may have all seen it, you know. Here we say that we are laying off this bunch of people in this location, but then ultimately lower level, or I won't say lower level, or similar people, but at least more junior people are being hired to do the same job. Yeah, quite true. So, so why? The, the question is why, but then again, that's the question for, I, I, I suppose, the global direction. Yeah. For all to think about. Yeah, yeah. yeah Vivian, sorry, I think, sorry. you know, like, uh, just to, you know, like uh, echo to whatever Mike said, I think, digital transformation or digital learning has actually helped in that space, right? I mean, like to upskill and reskill people, right? That's the more number two. I mean, whatever technology they're talking about, we need people to do that as well. So if you can prepare yourself to embark on that, then, you know, like, uh, I, I remember when I was a small boy, you know, like I used to go to like, uh, like old buildings with my father and there used to be a leaf operator, you know, because they don't want anyone else to know. So what happened to the guy yeah. now? He's still like working. But of course, he has done reskilled himself, upskill himself. So, to say, you know, like uh, we won't be useful, I think uh, it's not that. But to reskill and upskill, and especially using using all these technologies, right? Uh, using uh, LMS, a good LMS, and like what Mike said earlier, regular discussion, um, uh, documentation. I think those are things that 
the digital strategy will help okay yep. Re- regular discussion you know i don't expect you to go and talk to your 200 people but using digital you can do that using a platform you can do that but whatever said and done platform is platform without all these other things you know uh, it is just enabler the okay, platform right. is an enabler so people like mike you know like other one who will go and make the change and the platform will help them to enable all these things i yep, think agree. Kang, Kang, Kang what has got a question i think someone is putting yes. on the hand yeah yeah, yeah you're on mute Yes, yes, yeah. thanks, thanks. Actually, I, I like uh, Vivian's question. It's a, it's a real question that uh, is also faced in one of the uh, situations that I face, right? As people go through digitalization journey, right? Sometimes I guess that, that word of uh, unrealistic expectation, like we want data scientists, right? For example, last time the, the story in line is that we are doing digital, digitalization transformation things. And then a lot of the, maybe they will need to reduce, let's say 20, 30% of the technician. Of so sometimes yeah. the, the management team need to be sensitive and, and uh, aware of what, what they are saying. Because sometimes that like what Vivian say is true, whereby they say, oh, we need to uh, reskill and then make this technician become data scientist. So I was shocked and say, huh? How can a technician become a data scientist? Data scientist yeah. is the uh, people like in a PhD like this, you know. How can we just transform them from that? So it, it's become really unrealistic that it caused the, the the problem. But what mm. what what can be done through the transformation journey is that we need to prepare them. Like for example, technician, right? We can prepare them to be uh in a do a different role that is uh, more value add. For example, they can transform to a engineer, mm. right? Uh, uh, do simple uh, analytics. Rather than talk about data scientists, we talk about uh, machine learning, a lot of other things yeah. that is very difficult. So I think that, that kind of conversation, uh, realistic conversation must, must happen. Uh, That's right. uh, so yeah. so that, that comes into play. Very that triggers me that actually, Vivian. Because I have yeah, the same thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's actually this plan, platform is for, first of all, to know what is out there and what mm. could be something disrupting and be aware mm. and then mm. learn with each other. So I think with that, uh, I would like to may thank I? you both. Yeah, Mike, you so want to say I, something? May I add one yeah. more point to, to what Ivan just said? You know, uh, okay. I, I guess what you said is really spot on because one part of my transformation process actually addresses that. But guess what? It's not addressing them when, it, it, when they are staff of your organization. We address that when they are being hired for your organization. Because if you tell them, uh, I'm a technician now. I'm going to hire you as a technician, but I expect you to do this. How many percent of the guys, are, are we saying that 100% of the guys will say, okay, Ken, no problem. I'm okay for that. I can bet you there are at least half of them who say, you, no, I don't want. Because they dare not step out of their comfort zone. Then probably you know, as you hire, these are the group of people that probably is good for this. But the rest of the guys, when you hire, you know this guy has this aspiration and that aspiration and that career path, you as a manager, as a hiring manager, you know how to plan that path. And again, as it is documented in your systems, again, any new hiring manager coming in will know exactly what this person can do in the future. And that is the continuity that from cradle to grave, it's not what should be did. Uh, well, of course, now, if you ask me, what should be taken now, whoever the staff in your organization, then yes, the skill, reskilling, skilling, reskilling, and you know, learning, unlearning, and relearning needs to take place. But if in an ideal situation, if you can actually backtrack that all the way to talent acquisition, the hiring process, that would actually in the long run solve that problem. Okay, just cool. to add to that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. One last time. <laughs> Okay, sorry, uh, I think... Uh, in, you in still have time, one slide? slide? Yeah. Yes, one last slide only, sorry. Okay. And that's where we do have this demo because we recognize the fact that this is uh, only a short session with everyone, but there is a demo workshop that we want to run for people interested to find out about what we can do. And this one, we would like to actually share a demo workshop on the external hiring process. What is the tweaking that we need to do like I mentioned just now, what should we be paying attention even before we hire? And of course, Silver will come in to say, hey, how Repo can help as a pre-hiring tool. 
And this work, demo workshop will actually allow you to have, ah, okay, that's how it looks like. Oh, okay, that's how that process is going to be like the transformation process. So if you are keen, let's take a photo of this QR code or immediately just register by all means. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all I think. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. So I think with that, uh, this hmm. ends our session. Thank you very much for uh, Mike and uh, Silva from yeah, ML and uh, yeah. Thank you very much for okay. Yep. All right. Thanks all for joining. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, we'll see you next month. Have a good weekend. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Thank you everyone. Bye. -bye.